Jeremy, uh, are you fit to play? Uh, I'm fit, but I won't be playing. So, uh, yeah, obviously got ruled out uh, yesterday. Just going to uh, play the precautionary route and uh, miss one more. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like you know I'd love to be out there, given that uh, we're not going so well. But uh, one more week and be back for the Giants. How, how frustrating is that? It is frustrating. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to watch, especially probably on game day when you feel like you can't contribute at the moment. Um, but, you know, throughout the week you can still stay engaged, contributing meetings and stuff like that. But until you're out on the field again, um, yeah, it's a long time waiting, but uh, I'll be back next week. If you could... If you had magic and you could bring <laughs> you something to this team in the style of which you are playing at the moment, what would it be? What's the one area that you wish that your teammates could uh, rediscover? Uh, oh, confidence is such a broad thing, but uh, especially with the, we're a bit stagnant with the way we're moving the ball at the moment. We're struggling Everyone's to get Everyone's saying that. Well, what, how does that... Well, tell us the mindset. Try to explain well, I think, the I th mindset you get into to be stagnant with the pill. Well, you do, at, at times, you've got to give credit to the opposition, the way that they defend, and they yeah. want to take away switch and take away the inside clearly to, um, to make sure you can't get on the open side. But at the same time, you've got to be bold with the way that you want to move it, and you've got to take risks at times. And... Um, we're finding at the moment that um, if we're getting bogged down early, um, you know, it's a mental battle. You start, you know, second-guessing yourself and you're a little less confident to take so it how do you get? how do you get that and what type of player do you need? And join in, well, Jack. He hasn't played for the last two yeah, There's no doubt yeah. him and Langdon, yeah, him half and Langdon Massive off, miss. Yeah. off half-back because they're the interceptors and a lot of offence starts when you guys take marks. But what type of player do you need when the ball is stagnant it's going short, wide? So who do you need? Is it up to the leaders? Is it up to the young blokes and say, just run, run, get it, run? Who, who, who does it, or is it everyone? It's a number of things. Like, um, you know, we've got blokes down there like Maynard and Crispy who are quite capable in taking yeah. and changing the game and running off half-back line. And um, James Ocean is a good decision-maker off the ball. And we've just got to make... Well, firstly, blokes have got to provide options for us to move the ball and then you've got to be willing enough to take it on. And at the moment, we're playing a little bit safe with the ball, um, but expect a spike in it. I think we had the intent last week. We just lacked a bit of polish um, moving the ball forward. So, Sides so so ebb and flow, I reckon, as well. And continuity in your back six is is key to being... It's a, king. A, a, is, yeah. it's, like, it forward is. lines change. You get... A, Guys rest through the forward line, but very rarely do midfielders rest through the back line. So, yeah. I mean, you, you lose Lang, Langdon, who... Uh, it's very, very underrated outside of, I reckon, Collingwood. And we sort of put a lot of time into him last year. He's a, he's a really good interceptor. And, and obviously, arguably, the best interceptor in the game sitting across here mm. the table. You take them out, and then it goes on to, to Maynard and Crisp, who are probably more attacking weapons. Mm. They've got to start doing a little bit more defensively. It, it, Do it's you so sense key. that as, as a forward, when you're a forward, playing against a team that's just a little bit Well, if, out of if, we're, if we're playing against Collingwood and Jeremy Howe's not playing, there's a little smile on my dial. No, and then <laughs> I'm not going to get my headset on for one, but well, he's arguably, not be jumping in, arguably he's, he's, he's their, their best offensive weapon in, the, in their defence. So it's, it is so king to, to sides. And you look at West Coast, arguably got one of the, the best defences and they used yeah. to have the, the web... But Shannon Hearn and, and Jeremy McGovern have played a lot of footy together. They get Tom Barras back in as well. Hey, Shepherd. They missed Shepard last year, but he, but he played. He's playing this year. I, I reckon it's the, the area of the ground that if you want to have it cemented and you want to have six or seven blokes that are regulars in there, the back line's certainly key. Can I ask you a question? I, I should have given you some warning and I haven't. Right. There's a bit of talk, and I, I, don't, I, I don't know if it's true or not. The whole Jaden Stevenson affair, which you were a part of, and congratulations for, for being a leader at that time. Has any fallout of that, do you think, out from outside we can look at, has that contributed to the kind of form? Because people are saying, God, there's, there's trouble at Collingwood. You know, some players weren't happy that, you know, Stevenson went to Walshy and other players and said, no, he had to do it. And there's just a feeling that there's some, there's some issues inside. Now, I'm not going to expect you to say, <laughs> yep, <laughs> you, you got it in one. Put it another way: Has it has it been difficult dealing with the Stevenson situation? Well, initially it was. It was, it was an uncomfortable situation that had to be dealt through throughout the club. But I feel like the way that the club has approached it and dealt with it has been a really positive uh, move for the club in the way that we're going forward. And um, the unfortunate thing at the moment, we're going to be without Steve for at least another seven games, I think. So, and he's a he's an A-grade forward for us and provides plenty of energy and spirit in that forward line. But 
we've got guys that are still being able to come in and fulfil the role. And does it take its toll on the team? Absolutely not. I don't think not on no, game day. No. No way. And internally, we've. So no we've, excuse for that. No, there's no excuse for you know we we are in a little bit of a slump in terms of the way that we're playing, but we're not trying any less. Our attitudes have remained the same, and the morale's at you know a really good high. And we're we're coming in, we're tipping in. We're just not we're just not executing well enough for long enough. But. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're ten and five. We're sitting third, and we're we're not playing that great at the moment. But we've got time to turn it around, and this week's a good challenge. Like we've got three games in a row. We've got West Coast, Giants, Richmond. Oh, it's a huge so three a, weeks. So it's a great Fantastic. time to play the best sides in the comp. So we'll get uh, back on the horse. Uh, recent history has had thrown up probably every year one or two maybe clubs under the pump go to Perth, unexpected win. I mean, there's been some big emotional wins on the road. You guys. I reckon I've done that once or twice. Yeah, Melbourne did it last year at the Melbourne, end of the yeah. season to, to make finals. Yeah, so did too. Collingwood have always travelled really have, well too. Yeah. A lot of the, I, 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 well, sort of in my etched in my mind is the way they travel to Sydney. They've always gone to Sydney <laughs> and, and played well up in Sydney. And, yeah. and I know you've been to. to no, why? Well, because they Coast. hit hard and move the ball quick. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it, there is so many games over the back end of the season now, I mean, and where else are playing the Giants this week, and the, these guys are playing West Coast. They're just tantalising fixtures. You look and you go, well. The fans look at it, and, and arguably the players do as well. They look at it in the ladder predicting, oh, if we can win that one and we can win this one, there, where, where's where we're going to position ourselves. Do you need to get on the road? These are where you play. Do you need to get... Do you think it can be a positive? I think it's a perfect time for us to get away and play a quality side interstate. I think, like... Why is Jack it perfect? It too much... Too much being said and written and about the, you, no, no, or no, the way you're playing. It's just a great opportunity. You're travelling, you're going to a hostile environment, so you've got to bring your A game. It's just, yeah. I don't know, just you're forced to come out and go start well right from the start and then project it through. And I think we do we do play well when we travel. Yeah, we do. Um, I don't know how much you read into that, but at the same time, there's there's not a worse... or There's not more a hostile environment than playing at Optus. It's and, intimidating, um, really, isn't it? Yeah, Paul, Paul, yeah. Paul, I reckon... Right, with the big fella back. I reckon it's just... Um, there's an element of tribalism about going away to, to a... a a foreign land or going away to the other side of the country. <laughs> you have ever seen the movie it three, is, it is. movie 300, Robbo, where yeah. you go, go across as 300 or, or 22 blokes yeah. and, and staff and... 300 you, against 10,000. You're in, you're in against 10,000 or 50,000 yeah. in Optus Stadium over there. It's, it, there's great, good, great players, good players thrive on that and they love it. Who's Leonidas? He was, he was leader of... <laughs> Pendlebury, the, isn't he? Pendlebury, yeah, the big if well, let's be honest. I mean, yeah. we can all sit there and talk about how you're playing. It's up to the players and it's up to the leaders. From Penelbury, Adam Trelaw, who's not here tonight, all the players who have been there in this situation before, they've, they've got to stand up for this weekend because if you don't, the pressure and the external pressure and the internal pressure is just going to just double and, and, and triple. Yeah, we're under no illusion that we, we got, you know, some blokes that are playing under par at the moment in terms of what they were at the start of the season, but... They're still tipping in as much as they can. They're still training hard, and it's gonna. It will turn at some point. And there's, like I said, the opportunity to play West Coast at their home ground this week. What a perfect way to bounce back! Can't wait. Before we get back onto your big game, your cousin's got a big game <laughs> potentially on Thursday night. Matthew Wade, your cousin. Have you been yep. in touch with him over in uh, in England? Yeah, so we've been flicking some text messages back and forth. Um, yeah, so at the moment he hasn't hasn't officially been called in, but um, it'd be oh, it'd be a great story. Great for him to get back and get an opportunity. Um, Speak about a hostile environment coming in a World Cup <laughs> semi-final in England against England. So Batting three, maybe. It would oh, be a great opportunity. And to be honest, like he, he has been, he's had an incredible 18 months. So it would be great to get some reward for effort. But, um, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's exciting. And with it, fingers crossed, he gets a gig.